you know, Hanukkah is coming. And I was thinking, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'll be a little bit sarcastic here. I'm very much opposed to Hanukkah. It was wrong. What, what Yudha Maccabee and his brothers did was absolutely wrong. Why do I say that? This, that whole go back to the Temple Mount and restart the Temple service. Who do they think they were? One, they had been away from the Temple for a significant amount of time. Their minhag already was, they do not go to Harabayas. Yes, it was imposed on them on the Goyim, but that's our situation also. It originally was started, the Goyim didn't let us. But now, that became the minhag. And they didn't know where the Makomos uh, the, are, the Tuma and Tara, and their ultimate mace. They should have basically just said, no one goes up on the Temple Mount. They would know that today's great rabbis have also said, no going on the Temple Mount. What, what made it what made it mutter for them and usher for us? It must have been that what they did was forbidden. And then you might say, no, but the temple is still standing. So you're telling me that had the bad guys, whoever they were, succeeded in, let's say, knocking down the temple. And then the Maccabees had come and found, you know, the temple ruins right there and been like, oh, well, the temple's destroyed. Now we have to wait for Mashiach to come before we could even go up there and begin to do anything. Yeah, that, that, that isn't that the Psaac today? Very strange. How, how could they do such a thing? The answer is they knew what they were doing. And when there's a reason, you go up there, just like today, as many are waking up and realizing we are supposed to go to the Temple Mount. We are supposed to rebuild the temple. We are supposed to conduct the temple service, do whatever we can. Now, the Maccabees didn't even have a menorah. They basically they didn't even have uh, an altar, right? They had to rebuild the altar. It's been pointed out by many. Hanukkah refers to the inauguration of the new altar. Why? The temple had been inaugurated already hundreds of years before that. It's the altar that was inaugurated. They took apart the old altar, didn't know what to do with its stones, so they built a brand new one, and they inaugurated that altar. That is what's described in the books of the Maccabees. Of course, the Nes Pach Hashemin, which is, by the way, has to be pointed out, is, uh, I think the rabbi has a few shurim about this. If the Maccabees had done everything like we read about, and the Nes Pach Hashemin had not happened, we would still have a holiday. But if the Nes Pach Hashemin had happened, but this had resulted in, let's say, uh, a defeat like the Bar Kuchba rebellion, then we would not have a holiday. It, it happened. A uh, big tzaddik, one of the Amorayim, his uh, daughter accidentally put what? Vinegar in the candles. Running for Shabbos, it's not going to burn. And he said, don't worry about it. The same God who commanded that oil should burn will command that vinegar should burn. And lo and behold, a miracle happened. Should we make a holiday about that because the vinegar was able to burn over Shabbos? Even if the oil had lasted for 16 days, that would not be a reason to create a, a holiday. Uh, another point about Hanukkah, which we should say, the Rambam says, They set up a king from among the Kohanim, and uh, basically independence, Malchus returned to the Jewish people for more than 200 years, until the end of the Second Temple period. So if you think about this, wait, what Rambam's saying, uncharacteristically redundant. They set up a king, and so they had kingdom once again. And this just goes to show you that, uh, like Rav Shechter told me when I was your age, uh, you could have Malchus. Malchus means a government system uh, that we run the place. And the Melech is specifically the guy in charge. And you could we have a Malchus, even if we do not have a Melech. There's Malchus exists. It's like a Mamlacha. It means a nation, a nation state. And whether or not you have a person who is actually called Melech or not, is no difference. You always have leadership. Uh, you might have heard the, the rabbi gave a shir last week, uh, where he talked about, I think it was Rabbi Yosef Albo's position, what was wrong about the request for a king. Well, it's that they wanted a hereditary king, which is basically something that exists among the Goyim, but not among the Jews. And of course, that's not Rambam's opinion. Uh, Rambam doesn't say, he explains clearly what the problem was with the request for a king at the time. Point to the Rambam, having a Joshua or Samuel or Moses or Gideon is just as having a king as having a king. And the whole thing about it being hereditary or not, the kingship being hereditary, is not a distinctly Jewish facet or not. Adarabah, we learn from the case of a king, the Chazal of Adrush about this, that it's supposed to be Hereditary. Kingdom is hereditary. That's a Jewish halacha. Vuvanov beker of Yisrael. And we also learn from that that even the kahuna, the high priesthood, and other srarot among the Jews are hereditary. So 
Rambam would not hold of this distinction. Adarabba, you actually find among many Gentile groups that their kingdom is not hereditary. What examples exist most prominently? Uh, like they point out, the Edomites and the Romans. Why is it that the list, all the Edomite kings who ruled in Edom, before there was a king ruling in Israel, it appears twice in the Bible with very slight changes, once in Barashas and once in Divrayamim. And did you notice there that no king is hereditary there? It's always someone else who ruled after the, the previous guy. And that's the way the Romans worked also. Where else did they have such a thing? Well, there's been a few Gentile societies throughout history, some major ones, where they did not have a system of hereditary kingship. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that having hereditary kingship is a distinctly Jewish phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. The the Polacks had, had ways of elections and stuff. They had electors. Certain places in Europe, they had these things. Uh, what else? What other major society used to not have uh, hereditary kingship? I mentioned the Edomites and the Romans, but you also look at what's happening with the, the, the Moabites. It's implied in a few places that they also occasionally just had an election. Who gets to be king? The sages say there was other societies also. They did this, and the Tziv mentions that. So, obviously, that distinction is not something that the Rambam would hold of. Mm -hmm. And also, that classic vort of the Ramban, that the Maccabees' mistake was that they took the kingship upon themselves, and that was part of their undoing. It basically got a zero against them from God. Now, of course, if they hadn't sinned in other ways, they would have lasted. But this basically meant that they were already you know, getting off on the wrong foot. That's the Ramban's opinion. The Rambam is explicitly against that. The Rambam says that it's legitimate to have kings from the other tribes. There's no requirement that the kings be Davidian. Yes. Well, Rambam actually makes a point that there's a, a, a different, uh, a different difference that you can make. Mm -hmm. That it's not just other tribes, but specifically Kohanim shouldn't have the office. Yeah, and, and and even that the Rambam would say that there's no specific problem with that, just like he held. Levites had been in charge. Moses was, he says, Moses was a was a priest, but was was a king, and Eliyahu Kohen had the authority of a king. He was a coin gadol. So the Rambam is whatever the Ramban says. Let's not confuse it. Whatever the Ramban and uh, the Sefer Harikorim say, that's not the Rambam. That's not Maimonides. Okay, so uh, these things are complicated. The point is, uh, I do not understand how people actually in comfortably you cannot have celebrate Hanukkah and say that it's forbidden to go to the temple now. They do not go hand in hand because that's what you're celebrating, basically. You're celebrating also, by the way, uh, Rabbi Hammer pointed this out. Hanukkah is a holiday strictly for those people who are religious nationalists who believe that Jews should fight in an army. If you don't believe in a Jewish army, if you don't believe in Jewish nationalism and the Jewish religion, if you take one or the other, then Hanukkah should not be for you. I remember someone, one of these militant secularists, Maybe he's a leftist, maybe he's not. He could just be a classical liberal, like a centrist. But he says Hanukkah is basically what we lost. You know, his his ideological forebears lost. You know, they were they're the ones who were anti-religious and they didn't want this thing. So we we should know what Hanukkah is about. It's definitely not what President Bush said once upon a time, you know. But then again, he also wasn't exactly the smartest person. So uh, we'll we'll forget about him. We would like to encourage our viewers to share these videos with friends and send in your responses. If you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael or invite the rabbi for a speaking engagement, please email us at office at machonchilo.org.